Oh, I will sing praise with the spirit, but I will sing praise with the mind also. Otherwise, if you say a blessing with the spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say the amen to your thanksgiving, since the outsider does not know what you are saying? For you may give thanks well enough, but the other person is not built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Let us pray. God of grace, beauty, and all goodness, we pray this morning with joy and hope-filled hearts. We pray in our minds for all those whose blessings we know, and we pray rooted in the Spirit for all those hidden struggles which bring us aghast and worry. Lord, we pray this morning for inspiration, for praise to be on our lips, and a divine peace to overwhelm the fret in the human world. We open our minds to the Spirit that our hands might do your will and our thoughts might be transformed by your word made flesh. Bless us in Christ's holy name. Amen. Our opening hymn is Awesome God, and the words are found on your screen. Our call to confession today comes from Psalms 10, verse 7. Hear these words and let it lead us into a right confession before God, each other, and ourselves. Their mouths are filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. Under their tongues is mischief and inequity. Let us pray the prayer of confession is printed in our bulletin or upon the screen. Together, our salvation comes in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
who gave of himself to save everyone who would confess his name in humility, devotion, and confident hope of pardon. God, we read your word, and it convicts us. Just as it did when the psalmist transcribed your word in his own day for the people to hear and heed. Lord, we confess we too are sometimes full of mischief, and we can't help the inequity we breathe out. We don't mind our tongues and our thoughts are full of self-protecting deceit instead of honoring you with truth and the spirit of forgiveness unto others. Hear now my prayer of confession. The grace of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And that grace is meant for all who confess their sin and found, find salvation in the heart of Jesus Christ and following him to the cross, knowing the joy of being reborn. This is the time that we ask our kids to come forward. Hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Good, 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 good. Come over here. So Easter is coming up. It is going to be Easter just shortly. Let me get my mask. So Easter is coming up here in just a few minutes, in just a, in just a few weeks. What do you guys know about Easter? Easter is the day that we celebrate salvation. It is the day that, we, that, that Jesus Christ was resurrected and he gave us everything from life and goodness to hope. What does hope mean to you guys? I hope the Easter Bunny comes. I hope Santa Claus comes. I hope school is going to be good to me next year. Hope. Hope is good. And in church is where we find the biggest hope. That is where we find love. Church is where we find friendship. Church is where we find fellowship and knowing each other. Now, today, the older kids are going to go to the auto museum, okay? There's, some, there's a thing in church called um, youth group. And when you guys get bigger, we'll be taking you guys to the auto museum and to have fun things going on, too, okay? That is the life of the church. Praise be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly and merciful Father. We give you thanks for your love, for your grace, for your peace. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, guys.
please bow your heads and join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, we pray this morning for your inspiration that your will might be manifest and our worship might be pleasing unto you. God, bless us in your word and give each of us what we need in your holy scriptures and in our own lives. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 15 through 18, page 828 in your pew Bible. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. God's word according to the prophet Daniel. Our gospel reading today comes from John 19, 38 through 42, found on page 114. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and they wrapped it in the spices and linen cloth, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, and so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, that is where they laid Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Today is the fifth Sunday in our Lenten journey. And we have followed the Gospel of John's account from Christ's life. From chapter 1, where the word was made flesh. To today's final scriptures where Jesus' lifeless body was brought down from that old rugged cross. And was laid to rest in that garden tomb. The disciple whom Jesus loved took Mother Mary into his own home to care for her as he might his own mother. And here we are, find, we find Joseph of Arimathea, a secret follower of Jesus. And Nicodemus, someone who came to Jesus at night. Those two men assumed the burial responsibilities in preparing Christ's body. We have walked this Lenten journey with the Gospel of John because it encapsulates Christ's life from the light of hope birthed into the world to Christ's life and ministry and miracles. Jesus' teachings, the betrayal. And Jesus' very real struggles. Christ's own authentic human agony and pain here at the very end. The Gospel of John is also a unique scripture touching on people's individual shortcomings. Like Peter denying Christ. Joseph of Arimathea being a secret follower of Jesus. But here at the end, doing God's duty. Maybe because there was no one else qualified to do so. Because Joseph came from an heir of authority. The Gospel of John we chose to follow these last five weeks is a hidden gem. Of humbleness. A loss of pride. A loss of dignity. But a testimony that despite our shortcomings, our frailties, God uses us. 
God loves us because we can't separate ourselves from the love and the hope of God, no matter how bad we are. Even when we think ourselves unworthy, too sinful, God has ways of using us, redeeming us, and approving of us, showing us grace and mercy every day. Today we find Joseph of Arimathea being a secret follower of Jesus because he had been afraid of the Jews. And this is according to the gospel account. To us in our modern security, in our place of Sunday morning quarterbacking, we might look down on Joseph for being secret. We might look at Peter denying Christ with disdain for not being man enough to profess Christ publicly around that nighttime fire the night they took Jesus. And professing Jesus publicly is important. It's in the Bible, Matthew 10, 32. If we profess Jesus, Jesus will profess our name before the Father. 1 John 2, 23 those who deny Christ deny the Father as well. And we know the seventh commandment, don't we, Peter? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Yet Peter became the founder of the church after Jesus was taken. And yet he was convicted that night when that rooster crowed twice. But we have also learned God still had use of Peter after his denial. Joseph, a secret follower, was there so that he could take that body away for a proper burial. The teaching today is that we had best be careful when we start judging somebody else. When we are boastful or even mad about something or someone in particular. Because we don't have all of the truth. We don't have God's understanding of what is actually going on. We might think we do. We might think we have the answers. But God's understanding so far surpasses all of ours. We don't all know, always know what God has in mind. Now, I'm not saying that we overlook excuses like sin, like lying. Nor slights. But humans, as smart as we might be, we don't always see God's bigger picture. For God's ways are mysterious. And known fully only to God. Pastors can interpret the word. And sometimes we interpret it right. But I cannot claim to know the mind of God. I cannot begin to explain God's reasonings. For this, that, or the other. And so I preach faith instead. I preach hope. I preach humility. And in this world we live in, humility is in a very short supply. Joseph of Arimathea, like so many other biblical figures, was a very real person of flesh and blood. And the Bible tells us, tells us of a very significant action here at the end of John. And the other three Gospels... They give us a glimpse of this man, Joseph of Arimathea. It's a very small glimpse. From Mark and Matthew, we learn that Joseph was a rich man, a respected member of the council. In Luke, the Gospel of Luke added that Joseph had not agreed to the sentencing of Jesus by the Pharisees, but rather publicly dissented with them. The passage we, the passage we read in John today 
relates that Joseph was that secret follower of Jesus, but also a man of certain means because he had access to Pilate. And I just don't think the Roman prelate would just let anybody walk in before him, especially on a day like today. Because he had acts, Joseph of Arimathea had access to Jesus, I mean to Pilate. And Pilate consented in turning over the body of Christ to Joseph. And I am very sure Pilate was very relieved because he was eager to get this day over with. Once and for all to be done with this Jesus business. Little did Pilate know. God had some plans of his own. That none of them had foreseen. But each person in this story was playing a role. A role dictated by Christ. By God. Because God had the plans of his own. And while there were prophecies. Those plans were still unknown. Joseph of Arimathea was playing out his place as a man of authority. But also a devoted servant. Even if he didn't completely understand what was going on this day. Now, have you ever found yourself doing something without reason? We just react. And follow through with some mundane action. Only later to see God's will was being done all along. Now I imagine that was, that was happening with Joseph of Arimathea. Let's just say if he was a member of the council. A rich man by some accounts. Then he had a lot to lose. And absolutely nothing to gain by stepping forward and following, G following, forward, following Jesus' sentencing and execution. Jesus was a dead man at this point. And seemingly for the world to see, he was made out to be a very false prophet. Jesus could not even save himself as Pilate asked him. But Joseph was a secret disciple of Jesus. His passion, his love, his devotion, his faith did not die with Jesus on that cross. As I am sure a lot of peoples did. Joseph's faith and devotion lived on. In prayer, in servanthood, in some unexplicable drive... Joseph, forgetting his own self-interest, came before Pilate and asked for the body. And Pilate granted it. Joseph was racing against time as the Sabbath was coming with the setting sun. The body had to be taken down, prepared, and buried before Sabbath started under the strict Jewish custom. And it appeared no one else was going to do it. And so there Christ's body hung even after the two convicts Bodies have been removed. And I can assure you there were many watchers. Roman and Jew waiting to see who would claim that body. And here Joseph comes. A man of some repute. He is given the body of Christ. We learn Nicodemus joins with Joseph. Bringing a hundred pounds of myrrh and aloes. To prepare that battered and that bruised body. All that remained of this Jesus character. A shell. A shell of the Son of God. The defeated King of the Jews. And there was a freshly hewn tomb in a garden nearby. Joseph and Nicodemus laid that prepared body there in accordance with the customs of the day. Sometimes we don't know why we are doing things. I confess a lot of my ministry had just come from following God's lead. Giving up my lucrative work in corporate America to serve God's people here in Fairbanks, Alaska. Sometimes that defies logic. I understand Joseph of Arimathea just doing something so Odd and bizarre. 
Can you imagine what he told his wife that night? You did what, Joseph? I'm sure she slept with her doors locked and very uneasy that night, waiting for the temple guards or the Romans to bust into their house and drag them out. Because Joseph claimed the body of Jesus that day. It was publicly seen him being devoted and being a servant. But we do things in faith, not out of rational thought. Serving God is not about self-interest, nor anything to do with us. It, if it is, well, you're doing the work for the wrong reasons. And the Bible is clear about that, too. Today's Old Testament reading, I think, affirms much of what I'm preaching. The prophet Daniel did not have an understanding of what was actually going on. His spirit was troubled. His visions shared with him terrified him. And let me tell you, I imagine Joseph of Arimathea was troubled. As he approached Pilate and asked for that body of a crucified king of the Jews. In that day and age... It did not bode well for anyone to pay homage or show they cared whatsoever from an executed king. Much less a deposed king from two different peoples. The Jews and the Romans condemned Jesus. And here this man stepped up. In the power of the Holy Spirit, Joseph just did God's will. Even Daniel, troubled and frightened, affirms the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess it forever, forever and ever. In the face of those four great beasts, Daniel affirms God's kingdom forever, forever, forever. We don't do God's work in arrogance. In pride. For self-serving reasons. We do God's work with trembling hands. With broken voice. With troubled minds. But we do it nonetheless. On this fifth Sunday of Lent. Glory be to God on this most holy day. And next week is Palm Sunday. It is going to be a day of worship, of joy, of triumph, of rebirth. Let us come to the Lord again that day. Until then, amen. Our hymn of response, when I survey that wondrous cross, hymn number 223. Please stand if you are able.
Let us affirm what we believe using the second Helvetic Confession 5.117, which is printed in your bulletins or upon the screen. Together, these same works ought not to be done in order that we may earn eternal life by them. For as the Apostle says, eternal life is the gift of God. Nor are they to be done for ostentation, which the Lord rejects in Matthew 6, nor for gain, which he also rejects in Matthew 23. But for the glory of God, to adorn our calling, to show gratitude to God, and for the profit of the neighbor. For our Lord says again in the Gospel, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father who is in heaven. Amen. This is the time in our worship service. You may be seated when we offer our tithes and our offerings to support this ministry for the outreach beyond these walls. And the worship that goes in of these walls seven days a week. This is a place of healing and a place of grace. As Kathy is playing um, the organ, let us bring forward our tithes and offerings to the two, three plates up front. Heavenly and merciful Father, we give you thanks for these tithes and these offerings. Lord, we pray to you to multiply these gifts in your Holy Spirit that they may be compounded in the glory and the love that you have given unto this people. Lord, for the blessings that we count, for the thanksgivings that we know. 
Lord, we ask for this church to be the light upon the hill that we may call out to others, those who do not yet know your son's love, your son's salvation, that this church be a beacon to the hungry, the cold, and those who struggle. Lord, we give you thanks for all those who have come this day and for those who are online and who give to support our ministry. In your son's name, amen. time in our service where we pray for those things that are heavy on our hearts, for those things that give us reason to rejoice. Let us pray. Lord, send your spirit to those little flocks in China to reveal your hope to the world. Lord, for all those like Joseph of Arimathea who worship in secret, we pray. For those who share your gospel in secret, we pray. For those who lift up your son's name as their savior, we pray. Lord, for those countries that persecute the believers, we pray for those places in the world, Lord, where your name is a death sentence, we pray. Lord, we pray for this day for those places around the world, from Yemen to Ukraine, to those places near and, and far where oppression lies upon the shoulders of the marginalized, the outcast, the other. Lord, we pray that your light may illumine people's hearts to love one another, to heal one another, to witness together, Lord, the mystery of your faith. The hope that your son brought into the world as a light. That darkness shall not ever overcome. Lord, this day we pray for Kathy's dad. We pray for the care te teams. Lord, we pray for Joe and his knee replacement. We pray for Lynn, who's going to take care of him. Lord, we pray for those in our midst who are addicted. Lord, we pray for those who mentally struggle. Lord, we pray for those who are marginalized in our society. Who are not visible. Lord we pray for those who are incarcerated today. Lord let them know that they are loved. And that they are worthy. And that there is hope. 
Lord, we give you thanks for Will Lentz and Jim Durst for clearing the ice yesterday. Lord, we pray for those who are job sinking. We pray for Richard. That he may find a job with medical coverage. Lord, we pray for an opportunity to share the gospel with our neighbors. Lord, and we lift up those hearts who want to share your name. We lift up those, Lord, who are brave enough to confess your name publicly. And Lord, we boast that this church is an open door for all to know Christ's love. Lord, this day we pray. As Christ taught his own disciples to pray. Saying together, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today, brothers and sisters, is hymn number 618. O oh, love, how deep, how broad, how high.
let us go forth on this April 3rd, the fifth day of Lent, and carry Christ's light in our hearts and our, let God's word come out of our mouths and to bring hope, to bring peace, to bring healing, to bring joy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.